Hello learners, I am Sapna Shukla, former assistant professor from Amity School of Engineering and Technology, Amity University. In this video, we are going to cover basics of computer. Computers have become very important in our day-to-day -day life and it is being used by every person, be it a scientist, businessman, politician or a layman. This video has the following learning objectives. To understand computer and its applications, to understand the main components of a computer, to learn the various input devices, to learn the various output devices, to learn about software and its classification, to learn about computer's language and its classification. Now, the very first question is, what is a computer? Computer is an advanced electronic device that takes raw data as input from the user and processes it under the control of set of instructions which are called program, gives the result in form of output and saves it for the future use. Data can be anything like marks obtained by you in various subjects. It can also be name, age, sex, weight, height, etc. of all the students in a class. This data can be used to produce the desired information in the form of mark sheet with grade as per percentage of marks. We also can define a computer as per the functions it performs. A computer can accept data, store data, process data as desired and retrieve the stored data as and when required and print the result in the desired form. You can see two computers, a desktop computer and a laptop on the screen. This slide shows how an input is being processed by the computer and then it is converted to an output. Now let us go to and see some applications. There are various applications of computers in today's arena. Life without computers would be unimaginable today. Computer is used in business organizations for payroll calculations, budgeting, sales analysis, financial forecasting, managing employees database, maintenance of stocks, etc. We have the next application in banking. Banks provide following facilities. Banks provide online accounting facility which includes current balances, deposits, overdrafts, interest charges, shares and trustee records. ATM machines which are making it even easier for customers to deal with banks is also a form of computer. The next application we have in insurance field. Insurance companies are keeping all records up to date with the help of computers. The insurance companies, finance houses and stockbroking firms are widely using computers for their concerns. Insurance companies are maintaining a database of all clients with information showing procedure to continue with the policies, starting date of the policies, next due installment of a policy, maturity date, interest due, survival benefits, bonus. The computer has provided a lot of facilities in the education system also. The computer provides a tool in the education system known as computer-based education which is CBE. CBE involves control, delivery and evaluation of learning. The computer education is rapidly increasing the graph of number of computer students. There are a number of methods in which educational institutions can use computer to educate the students. It is used to prepare a database about performance of a student and analysis is being carried out on this basis. In marketing, we use computers. With computers, advertising professionals create art and graphics, write and revise copy and print and disseminate ads with the goal of selling more products. Home shopping has been made possible through use of computerized catalogs that provide access to the product information and permit direct entry of orders to be filled by the customers. We are using computers in healthcare also. Computers have become important part in hospitals, labs and dispensaries. The computers are being used in hospitals to keep the record of patients and medicines. It is also used in scanning and diagnosing different diseases. ECG, EEG, ultrasounds, CT scans etc. are also being done by computerized machines. Some major fields of healthcare in which computers are being used are diagnostic system, computers are being used to collect data and identify cause of illness, lab diagnostic systems. In this, all tests 
are being done and reports are being prepared by computer. We also have patient monitoring system. These are used to check patient signs for abnormality such as cardiac arrest, ECG, etc. Pharma information system is also there which checks drug labels, expiry dates, harmful drug side effects, etc. Nowadays, it is also being used in surgery. Computers are widely used for engineering purposes also. One of the major areas is Computer Aided Design, for short we say CAD. It provides creation and modification of images. Some of the fields in which CAD is being used is Structural Engineering, wherein stress and strain analysis for design of ships, buildings, budgets, airplanes, etc. is being done. Industrial Engineering, computers deal with design, implementation, improvement of integrated systems of people, materials and equipments. We are also using it in architectural engineering. Computers help in planning towns, designing buildings, determining a range of buildings on a site using both 2D and 3D drawings. It is also being used in military. Computers are largely used in defense. Military also employs computerized control systems. Some military areas where a computer has been used are missile control, military communication, military operation and planning and smart weapons. It is also being used in communication. Communication means to convey a message, an idea, a picture or speech that is received and understood clearly and correctly by a person for whom it is meant for. Some main areas in this category are email, chatting, Usenet, FTP, Telnet, video conferencing. We are also using it for government purposes. Computers play an important role for the government. Some major fields of this category are budgets, sales tax department, income tax department. We are also doing male female ratio count, computerizations of voter list, computerization of driving license system, computerization of pan card, weather forecasting. All is being done by computers. We are talking about e-governance today. The variety of applications suggests that we have got different characteristics of a computer. That is the reason we are able to use the computer in so many fields. The first characteristic is high speed. Computer is a very fast device. It is capable of performing calculations of very large amount of data. The computer has units of speed in terms of microsecond, nanosecond and even picosecond. The next characteristic is accuracy. The, in addition to being very fast, computers are very accurate. The calculations are nearly 100% error free. Computers perform all jobs with 100% accuracy provided that we as a user have given correct input and the correct logic to it. The next characteristic of a computer is storage capability. Memory is very important characteristic of a computer. A computer has much more storage capacity than human beings. It can store large amount of different types of data such as images, videos, text, audio and many other forms. The next characteristic of a computer is diligence. Diligence is like human beings. What we do is we get bored with some work but a computer is free from monotony, tiredness and lack of concentration. We as a human, if we have to do a repeated work, we get bored. But a computer can do a repeated work with the same speed and accuracy. The next characteristic of a computer is versatility. As we saw in many applications, you know, there are a variety of applications that are there in the computer. A computer, you know, is a versatile machine. It's versatile, we know from the applications, which it, this can be used to solve problems ranging from engineering problems to layman problems and there are you know a lot of applications which we are using in computers. The next characteristic of a computer is reliability. Computer is a reliable machine. Modern electronic components have long lives and hence nowadays we all rely on computers. The next characteristic of a computer is automation. Automation means ability to perform a given task automatically. So once a program is given to the computer that is stored in the computer's memory, the program and instruction can control the program execution without human interaction. So this is what is automation. The next characteristic of the computer is obviously reduction in paperwork. Everything is on the computer. The use of computers for data processing in an organization leads to reduction in paperwork and results in speeding up a process. As data in electronic files can be retrieved as and when required, 
the problem of maintenance of large number of paper file gets reduced. The next is obviously reduction in cost. Though the initial investment for installing a computer is high obviously, but it substantially reduces the cost of each of its transactions. Next, let us go and understand what are the different main components of a computer. So here you can see there is an input unit, we have the CPU, CPU has got memory unit, control unit, arithmetic logic unit and we have got an output unit. So what does an input unit do? It is a unit which contains devices with the help of which we enter data into the computer. This unit makes link between user and the computer. The input devices translate the information into the form understandable by the computer. Let us come next to the CPU. CPU is considered as the brain of the computer. CPU performs all types of data processing operation. It stores data, intermediate results and instructions in the form of programs. It also controls the operation of all parts of the computer. CPU itself has got many parts, the memory unit, the control unit, the arithmetic logical unit. The next we have the output unit. The output unit is a device which will actually display the result after the computer processes the data using CPU. So the output is basically output unit will convert the computer understandable data into human readable form and will display it on the output devices. Then we have the next, this is the central processing unit. Here you can see the CPU chips being used and as I told it is the brain of the computer and has three components ALU, memory unit, control unit. So the ALU basically is the arithmetic logic unit. So it has got an arithmetic section and a logical section. Function of arithmetic section is to perform arithmetic operation like addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. We also have logical section. Function of the logic section is to perform logical operations such as comparing, selecting, matching, merging of data. We also have memory unit. So memory unit is basically, you can say it's the RAM part of the CPU. It is basically whatever processing the computer has to do will be temporarily stored in the memory unit. Let's go to the control unit. What is the function of the control unit? The CPU has a control unit. Now this unit controls the operation of all parts of the computer but does not carry out any actual data processing operations. Functions of this unit are, it is responsible for controlling the transfer of data and instructions among other units of a computer. It manages and coordinates all the units of the computer. It obtains the instructions from the memory, interprets them and directs the operation of the computer. It communicates with IO devices for transfer of data or results from storage. It does not process or store data, but it controls all the operations. So that is the work of the control unit, a very, very important unit subcomponent of the CPU. Now let us go to the input devices. Now as we already saw, input devices accept data and instructions from the user. We have different forms of input devices. We have keyboard, mouse, light pen, optical magnetic scanners, touch screen, microphone, trackballs. So let us go and see one by one. The first one is the keyboard. We already know about keyboard. Anybody who is using desktop computer or a laptop has already seen a keyboard. The keyboard in most common use is the QWERTY board. Generally standard keyboard has 104 keys. Actually it is basically very common. So uh, let's not go into details of it. Then we have a mouse. A mouse is an electromechanical handheld device. It is used to control the moving icons on the Windows operating system. You can use it to start programs and for choosing options, but obviously you cannot use a mouse or uh, to enter text. So that is what is the purpose of a mouse. Then we, nowadays we have got different types of mouse. This is uh, a diagram of a mechanical mouse, which has got a uh, tracker and a ball inside which rotates. Okay, so it is basically uses an internal magnetically coated ball to detect the movement of the mouse across a flat surface and usually used with a desktop and you know keeping it clean is very important. We also have optical mouse which uses laser technology. We also have wireless mouse wherein you don't require these type of wires over here. 
we also have a variation which is a trackball. So trackball is a pointing device and is a mouse which is lying on its back to move the pointer. You rotate the ball with your thumb, your fingers on the palm of your hand and there are usually one to three buttons next to the ball which you use just like mouse buttons. Now the advantage of trackballs over mouse is that the trackball is stationary so it does not require much space to use it. In addition, you can place a trackball on any type of surface including your lap. For these reasons, trackballs are popular pointing devices for portable computers. The next we have a joystick. Joystick is also a pointing device which is used to move cursor position on a monitor screen. It is a stick having a spherical ball at its both lower and upper ends. The lower spherical ball moves in a socket. The joystick can be moved in all four directions. The function of joystick is similar to that of a mouse. It is mainly used in computer aided designing and playing computer games. Then the next we have light pen. You can see the diagram of the light pen. So light pen is basically a pointing device which is similar to a pen and it is used to select a displayed menu item or drop pictures on the monitor screen. It consists of a photo cell and an optical system placed in a small tube. When the tip of the light pen is moved over the monitor screen and pen button is pressed, its photo cell sensing element detects the screen location and sends the corresponding signal to the CPU. So this is about light pen. Then we have optical scanners. So these devices are used for automatic data collection. The devices of this category completely eliminates manual input of data. For example, the barcode reader is actually just a special type of image scanner. An image scanner translates printed images into an electronic format that can be stored in a computer's memory and with the right kind of software, one can alter a stored image. Another example of scanner is optical character reader. So let's see the diagram also. This is an optical character reader. Then we have a barcode reader. So this is showing how a handheld device you know, you can use a barcode reader and you can scan this codes. So barcode reader is a device which is used for reading barcoded data and uh, barcoded data is generally used in labeling goods, numbering the books, etc. It may be a handheld scanner or may be embedded in a stationary scanner. Barcode reader scans a barcode image, converts it into alphanumeric values, which is then fed into the computers and uh, to which the barcode reader is connected. So we also have optical mark reader. So you all must have written some of the other exams, right? Entrance exams. So you must have uh, filled in OMR sheets. So these OMR sheets are basically are fed into optical mark readers. So it is basically a special type of optical scanner used to recognize the type of mark made by pen or pencil. So it is used where one out of a few alternatives is to be selected and marked and it is especially very very uh, helpful in uh, checking the answer sheets of the examinations having multiple choice questions. The next is the touch screen. Another form of input is touch screen. So here the input can be given through the computer screen that accepts the input through monitor. Users touch electronic buttons displayed on the screen or they may use light pen. Nowadays, smartphones, laptops, TVs, ATM machines, all are using touchscreen panel. The next input device, which is the microphone. So microphone is an input device which takes input as a voice. So we have seen uh, the input devices. Now let us see the output devices. So what is an output device? Output device returns process data, that is information back to the user. So output devices return process data that is information back to the user. Some of the commonly used output devices are monitor, printers, plotter, speakers. Let us see them one by one. So we have got monitor. So monitor is the most common output device that is uh, being used. So people interact with this device most intensively than any other device. Computer information is displayed visually with a video adapter card and monitor. Now information processed which is uh, within the CPU that needs to be visualized, displayed is sent to the video adapter. The video adapter converts information from the format used in the same manner as a television displays information sent to a cable service. Basically there are uh, two types of monitors, CRT that is cathode ray tube 
and we have flat panel display. Flat panel display it may use a technology of LCD that is liquid crystal display or it may use LED that is light emitting diode display. So basically CRT cathode ray tube monitor is a typical monitor that you can see on a desktop computer. It looks a lot like the old style television screen and works the same way. These monitors uh, have a stream of intense high energy electrons which is used to form images on a fluorescent screen. A cathode ray tube is basically a vacuum tube containing an electron gun at one end, fluorescent screen at the other end. So under the flat panel monitor, it uses liquid crystal display. So basically it, this uses a cold cathode fluorescent backlighting. In case of LED displays, what happens is uh, we have uh, light emitting uh, diodes in which uh, backlighting is done and LED monitors are set to use much lesser power than the CRT and LCD and are considered far more environment friendly. The only disadvantage is that CRT is the least costliest then is the LCD and the most costliest one is the LED. So that is uh, it is environment friendly but it is uh, costly. The next we have the various types of printers. So uh, printers come various forms. Uh, so uh, let's say after a document is created on a computer and maybe I want a hard copy. So how do I take that hard copy? So I can take the hard copy of a document using a printer. Some printers offer special features such as colored and large page formats. So printers come in many forms. So we have got a laser printer, we have got an inkjet printer, we have got a dot matrix printer, line printer. Okay. So let us consider laser printer first. So laser printer is basically produces high quality print that one normally finds in publishing. It is extremely fast and quiet. Moreover, the operation of a laser printer is easy with automatic paper loading and no smudging or messing up of ink ribbons is there. The fastest laser printer can print up to 200 pages per minute in monochrome and up to 100 pages per minute in color. Let us go to the inkjet printer. An inkjet printer is like a laser printer but it uses ink cartridges. So basically it creates an image directly on paper by spraying ink through uh, as many as 64 tiny nozzles and although the image it produces is not uh, generally quite as sharp as the output of a laser printer but the quality of the inkjet uh, images is still high. Then let us come to the dot matrix printer. So dot matrix is the oldest one which is uh, being used. It is a one type of an impact printer. So it was uh, very popular at one point of time. So it is very versatile and inexpensive output device. In dot matrix printer, the print head physically hits the paper, hence the name impact through the ribbon and produces text or images by combination of dots, hence the name dot matrix printer. Its speed is measured in characters per second although it is less expensive but it is louder, slower and produces lower quality print. We also have another form which is called a line printer, here you can see the image. So a line printer is basically used with large computer systems to produce text based data processing reports. Line printers are high speed printers with speeds ranging anywhere from 100 to about 3800 lines per minute. In the past, print quality on line printers was not very high but developments in the technology are improving the print quality on line printers also. So these are in the cost ranges of lakhs of rupees. The next output device we have is a plotter. So where do we use plotters? If we have printers, why are we using plotters? So plotter is basically a special kind of output device that like a printer produces images on paper but does so in a different way. Plotters are designed to produce large drawings or images such as construction plans for buildings, blueprints for mechanical objects, an array of different colored pens in a clip, rack and robotic arm is part of a plotter. The instruction that the plotter picks up the appropriate coordinates, drops the pen down to the surface of the paper and draws to the ending coordinates. Plotters draw curves by creating a sequence of very short straight lines. So plotters are of, you can see two categories of plotters are there, flatbed plotter and drum plotters, you can see the diagram. 
So, flatbed plotters are uh, basically meant to be kept on table with restriction of paper size and we have drum plotters which are of big size using rolls of paper of unlimited length. Then the next uh, device output device is a speaker we all are aware it basically outputs sounds. So, we have seen hardware devices we have seen the CPU we have seen the input devices we have seen the output devices but you know without uh, software uh, hardware cannot do anything in a computer. So, software refers to a set of programs a set of instructions written in a computer language that makes the hardware perform a particular set of tasks in a particular manner. So, a software so be it your operating system be it your uh, uh, you know word processing systems all these are different types of software. So, you can classify the software into two categories system software and application software. System softwares are set of programs responsible for running the computer controlling various operations of computer systems and management of computer resources. Operating system falls under this category and OS is a system software that provides an interface for a user to communicate with the computer, manages hardware devices like the disk drives, keyboard, monitor, whatever you saw right now and it manages and maintains disk file systems and supports application programs. Some popular operating systems are Unix, Windows, Linux, etc. Then we have utility softwares, what are these? Uh, now these are programs that bridge the gap between the functionality of an OS and the needs of the user. Utility programs are a broad category of software such as you know uh, maybe you require to compress a file, uncompress a file or antivirus software, maybe you want to split or join files. So, these type of softwares are uh, considered as utility softwares. Then next we have application softwares. Application software is a set of programs which are written to perform specific tasks. For example, an application package for managing library is known as a library information system and it is used to manage information of library uh, such as keeping book details, account uh, holder details, book issue details, book return details, etc. Another application package can be managing student details in the form of student information system which can manage students roll number, name, parents name, address, class section, processing of examination, results, etc. Application software can also be broadly classified into two types, generalized packages and customized packages. So, generalized packages you have various examples. So, these are basically word processing software, spreadsheets, presentations, database, management system, graphics tool. Generalized packages are basically user friendly softwares written to cater to users very general needs such as preparing documents, drawing pictures as you can see in the list. Then we next we have customized packages. So, customized packages are application softwares wherein you have to customize to meet a specific requirement of an organization or institution. So, let us say for example, student information details, payroll packages, inventory control. So, usually these packages are written in a high level computer language. High level computer language we will be learning about computer language in the next slide. So, uh, we have uh, different computer languages also. So, as we and you are speaking Hindi, English to understand each other and many more languages. Similarly, the computers also need to have one particular language and uh, the language also should have some syntax. So, we have got uh, different uh, classification of the computer language. We have got low level language. As you can see, uh, this is the machine language which is in terms of zeros and ones. This was the language being used in the very beginning in fact. And then we have assembly language wherein we use mnemonics in the form of add, mul. So, this add indicates addition, this indicates, this mul indicates multiplication. Nowadays, we all use high level language and high level languages examples are C, C++, Java, COBOL, BASIC, Pascal and you can see a code snippet from a C, C++ language wherein you know uh, everything is very clear. So, this is the speciality of high level language, uh, it is very very close to uh, English that we speak. So, uh, uh, when we are talking about computer languages uh, and you know the computers understand machine level language, so hence we require compilers and assemblers. So, you can see over here uh, compiler converts a source program in high level language to an object program that is in machine language. We similarly have an assembler wherein an assembly language program is converted to machine language program. So, we come to the learning outcomes. So, what we learnt in this particular video, we learnt what a computer is and its applications we learned the characteristics of a computer, we learned the main components of the computer, the CPU, the ALU, the CPU has ALU, memory unit and the uh, control unit. 
then we, uh, we have we learned the various input devices, we learned about the various output devices, we learned software and its types, we learned the computer languages, high, low level languages and we also learned compiler and assembler. So, from this video uh, viewers, learners have studied about basics of computer, thank you so much.